Get ready because I have no idea what's gonna happen next. Let me set the stage. I got a random request on Twitter from Donald Trump's biggest fan. I'll say who he is at the end of this video because I'm doing this live and I don't want word getting back. So, Donald Trump's biggest fan has a podcast and asked me to be a guest on his podcast. My initial reaction was to say, duh, yes, of course, absolutely, I am doing this for many reasons. First and foremost, I am a shameless media whore, and I'm going to use it as an opportunity to plug my own podcast, which is amazing. And by the way, if you're not listening to it, you should. You can check out the Perez Hilton podcast with Chris Booker on iTunes, SoundCloud, or directly at PerezPodcast.com. Secondly, I agreed to chat with Donald Trump's biggest fan because I'm hoping to get some negative publicity out of this. I'm hoping Fox News or somebody will pick up on this interview and it will get me press. And I am a whore for PR. It's like that old saying goes, no press is bad press. So enough ado, let's do this. He's calling me right now. Hello? Hey Perez, it's Jacob Wall here. New How, in America podcast. How's it going? Good. Uh, I just we're, we're really happy to have you on because uh, a lot of our audience are, are Trump people and I think that you could really trigger them. Um, so I think, you know, it'll be provocative and, um, you know, well, I would say you. most of your audience is Trump people. All of so. it. <laughs> I would say so. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think you'll really kind of get them get them turning. We'll, we'll talk about, you know, your thoughts on Trump. Melania has high heels. Uh, Kathy Griffin, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. And I, I'm sure you'll have a lot to say. Let's do it. All right. I'll just start recording. I'll introduce you and we'll go from there. Welcome back to the Offended America podcast. On the phone with us today, we have one of the top celebrity gossip reporters, bloggers, you name it. He was one of the original guys out there. You guys all know him, Perez Hilton. Perez, how are you doing today? I am genuinely happy and excited to be here. And I must commend you. I mean, it's, I would say, quite an accomplishment to not just get the President of the United States to be aware of you, but he regularly retweets you. Yeah, you know, it's funny. He retweets me, and I just read in the New York Times yesterday that people were offering lobbyists like a quarter of a million dollars to get Trump to retweet them. And, I'm, and then, so I had a bunch of people asking me, did you pay $750,000? I'm like, no, I didn't pay anything, I promise. Like, uh, you know, so, but maybe you'll uh, start yeah. making money. Maybe people will offer you some cash. Hey, maybe. I hope so. Uh, so, so I mean, I'm just thinking. I Perez. actually, I, I do the opposite. Uh, he doesn't retweet me, but I like to make sure that I chime in and comment on every single one of Donald Trump's tweets. I think it's my civic duty. You, you must just be in hog heaven with this president. <laughs> I mean, he's a, he's a reality TV star. He's tweeting every day. There's like action, not just 24 hour news cycle. It's like every hour is a new news cycle. I mean, are, are you just kind of like, even if you're dismayed with what he's doing, are you just like in hog heaven from like a reporting standpoint? Well, I'm glad we can agree on the fact that he's a reality TV star in the present tense. You said he is, not he was. So I will agree with you on that. And as I've said, you know, after election day last year, Trump is the new Kardashian. Just like Kim and her siblings dominated celebrity news for years, everything Trump, not just him, but all of the ancillary players are what people are talking about. And that's my job, really. I don't even call myself a celebrity blogger. I call myself a pop culture blogger. And I always have talked about what people are talking about. So I think I would be doing my job poorly if I wasn't talking about Donald Trump and everybody Trump related. Yeah, I mean, Trump Trump is out there every single day. He's either, you know, making people really happy or he's triggering them, uh, you know, one way or the other. Um, so, you know, where, where do you stand on Trump? I mean, a lot of people who, who maybe haven't followed your Trump coverage, what are your thoughts on Trump just, just, from, just from an introductory standpoint? Sure. Well, I, like you, have a podcast, and I talk about Trump regularly on my podcast, so let me shamelessly plug that because I like to do that. If you're enjoying me on this podcast so far, 
check out mine. It's called the Perez Hilton Podcast with Chris Booker. And you can listen to the Perez Hilton Podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, or directly at PerezPodcast.com. And my thoughts on Donald Trump are, I'll say the first thing will be a compliment. He is very media savvy. Having said that, just because you're media savvy doesn't mean you're smart. I don't think Donald Trump is very smart because of many reasons, but one of them is, and we've heard this from many people close to him, he has surrounded himself allegedly with people who are smarter than him. And he repeatedly chooses to ignore the sage advice of people smarter than him. <laughs> if I wasn't the smartest person in A, B, C, or D, I would definitely more often than not listen to what my advisors told me. Interesting. So, okay, so there's, there's your introductory thoughts on, on Trump. Let me ask you this, okay? It's election night, uh, you know, 2016, arguably the biggest news event, most watched news event of all time that's ever taken place. What what are you doing on election night? I mean, are you getting ready to throw a Hillary after party? Uh, like, what, what were you doing that night? I was crying, which uh, made it onto Fox <laughs> News year end countdown. Um, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't regret that. It was a very real and a very raw moment for me. And I think a lot of people were crying because for many, I would say the majority of Amer Americans who voted because Hillary Clinton did win the popular vote, for many, Donald Trump stood for and stands for everything they stand against. And his idea of making America great in our eyes is actually making America worse. So... Uh, I had a completely awful election night, which that video still exists. And if you want to laugh at me or cry <laughs> with me, you can seek out that video because I published it everywhere. Yeah, I, I mean, would, so if Hillary won, I mean, would that have been as much fun? I mean, I know you, you weren't a fan of Trump winning, but a Hillary White House. I mean, a lot of people think she would have kind of proceeded into the White House, been very low key you know, not been super high profile. Would, would that have been really as much fun as you've had with a President Trump in the White House from just a coverage standpoint? I don't care if it was fun, if it would be fun or not. I don't care that Trump is good for business and I can acknowledge that. Every insane thing that he does benefits the media, which he constantly attacks. Him constantly attacking the media ultimately only serves the media, I think. Um, but I, I would rather go back to the boring days of Barack Obama than be where we are right now, or the so, boring days of what a Clinton presidency would have been. Do you think that goes back both ways, though? Do you think the, the, the media attacking him only helps him, or do you think it only goes I, one direction? I don't think the media attacks him. I think the media reports and calls him out on his repeated lies, and he can't handle that because he is so deluded and delusional that he believes his own lies, and he will swallow whatever spin he wants us to swallow. But the media won't swallow alternative facts. As simple as that. So so let's let's talk about Melania yesterday, because I know you reported on this. She shows up in uh, Houston. I thought she looked tremendous. I thought she looked fantastic. But the media seemed to grasp, grasp onto, of all parts of her outfit, her heels. I mean, like, I'm not a fashion guy, but is, were they notable to you? Uh, did that stick out immediately when you saw her? It absolutely stuck out to me. And in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it matters, but um, it just goes to show you that maybe she really isn't happy. I don't even know what it goes to show you. Let me think about this, truly. Um, I think it's just another question of, it, it was something that maybe another first lady would have thought secondly of and maybe not have done and it was just a distraction for her husband interesting i mean do you uh, one thing i think is interesting is trump seems very high profile but i don't know i mean 
Melania doesn't seem to do a lot of the things that that Michelle Obama did. Michelle Obama, if you remember, she'd like go on Ellen, she'd dance around. She, you know, she was she was a lot of fun for the for the media. Do you think that Melania, you know, in your eyes as as a reporter, needs to step out more and and have more fun on like TV shows? No, I don't think Melania needs to do anything that she doesn't want to do. Okay, and and I don't think she does. I think she's very kind of reserved. She's she's kind of quiet. I, I would say. Yeah, uh, but uh, I mean, she didn't sign up for this. She just wanted to marry a really rich dude. <laughs> That's all she wanted. Well, I think I think a lot of people, if you look back, I mean, Trump has been talking about running for president since like the '80s, and you know, he he finally did it, and he you know won his first time around, which is you know shocking to a lot of people. It wasn't shocking to me, I, I must say, but it was shocking to a lot of people. Uh, so, Perez, is there anything that people? I, I want to let you go here, but is there anything that people should? should keep their eyes out for anything that you think is coming. There's all these leaks and people talking. I'm sure you hear a lot of stuff. I mean, what do you think is the next shoe to drop that you might be reporting on? Or are you just following it day by day like the rest of us? I mean, I really think there is a lot to the Russia investigation and I'm thankful that we haven't heard much or anything from Mueller himself or from even that investigation. That means it's furthering along. Um, you know, like that old saying, where there's smoke, there's fire. So I'm still very concerned about that, and we'll be keeping a close eye on that. Yeah, about about that, I, I wanted to ask you. I mean, it seems to me like a, like a lot of people that are that are observing the investigation, particularly those that, that maybe don't like Trump, are kind of hoping. They're hoping that Mueller comes out and says that Trump colluded with Russia. They're they're really hoping that that happens. And I don't understand it. I mean, that that would be a disastrous thing for our country for that to be what is found. I mean, are you hoping that that is the outcome or are you just watching and seeing what happens? I'm not hoping for it. I expect it. I am expecting it. I think that is what happened. And I know how uh, the process will work. He will get impeached and then Mike Pence will become president. And even though I fundamentally, viscerally, extremely disagree with the majority of everything that Mike Pence stands for, I will say this, I would feel a lot more confident and comfortable with Mike Pence, awful as he may be in my mind, as president, <laughs> than I do with Donald Trump as president. Really? Really? I don't know. I think Trump to me would seem, I don't know, a little bit more your, your speed, but I, I guess you'd rather have Mike Pence. Interesting. Uh, You've been far too polite. This is not what I was expecting. I was expecting well, I another mean, look, Jesse Waters kind of situation. Yeah, look, I, I give everybody a fair shake. I mean, I'm not, I'm not Jesse Waters. Are I, you really a Trump supporter? Let me ask you. Are you I'm, trolling I'm, people or are you 100% legitimately no, into him? No, I'm, I'm a red-blooded, 100% Trump supporter. Nobody supports President Trump as much as I do. That I will tell and you. And it's I mean, authentic. Totally authentic. And I'll tell you what. Why? When he said, when he said, I'll tell you what happened. When he came out down the escalator, first of all, that he didn't need to say anything. He had my support. But when he came out and said, we're going to build a great, great wall, I mean, he had me and I was ready to support him all the way. Just because of the wall? That, no, you don't understand. I mean, that's the, it's the audacity to come out. Not, I mean, the wall's a wall. We need to, you know, have a border. That's something I agree with. But the audacity to, to specifically mention, you know, not use, you know, political euphemisms like comprehensive immigration reform, which is the favorite word of everybody on, on Capitol Hill. But to say, no, forget that. We're going to have a great, great wall. He and also the, said Mexicans are rapists and drug dealers. Like, said, let, said let, me, let me make a, a very important point. Not just Donald Trump, but so many people on the right have this war against political correctness. Maybe political correctness isn't the term we should use, but as somebody who has firsthand seen the damage that words can cause, I am a lot more mindful now as a grown ass person of the words that I do use. And I now know that everything I think, I shouldn't share publicly. Well. Listen, but you know what? President Trump is is not a racist, and in fact, we've had we've had on everybody. I mean, we've had uh, Martin Luther King's niece, Alveda King. We've had Pastor Mark Burns. We've had George Foreman, of all people, come on. I mean, you name it, we've had them, and they all say across the board, 
We had, in fact, we had Malik Obama, Obama's brother, come on the show and say, President Trump's a great friend of mine. He's not a racist. I've never seen the slightest inkling of racism from him. And I've met the guy, and I never saw any kind of racism or sexism or anything with the guy. So, I mean, the media says one thing. You know, Trump's actions say another thing. And, you know, so that's kind of how, how I work in, in judging the guy. And I've seen just him do, you know, tremendous great things for the country. All right. <laughs> So Perez, it's been great to have you. Where, what's the what's your site these days? Is it still PerezHilton.com? Is that where people can find you? Yeah, PerezHilton.com. I'm across social media on every platform at the Perez Hilton, and my podcast is at PerezPodcast.com. Um, thank you for this civil discussion. I appreciate uh, being able to exchange ideas without denigrating each other. No, we don't. We don't need to denigrate each other. I mean, we're we're talking about politics here. It's not going to ruin anybody's day to talk about politics. We can have a civil discussion, and you know, we bring on people from both sides if they'll come on. I mean, I want to say something. We've invited on thirty plus people from the Obama administration, and none of them have 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 offered to come on. So we'd love to have people from from the other side come on. Uh, but Perez, it's been great to have you. You too. All right. Have a good one. Hey, Perez, I, I wanted to ask you real quick. I, I noticed you had those lawnmowers come on in your video. Are you living in Hollywood Hills? <laughs> no. Oh, because I live there, and I swear to God, I couldn't even podcast because the, the lawnmowers in that – and I was living in Laurel Canyon. People had lawnmowers on all different days of the week, and it was just – it made me, like, suicidal. It was just horrible. Um, but uh, uh, luckily, you're, you don't have to put up with that every day, I hope. No, no, just once a week. Okay, great. Yeah, it was great to have you. You uh, too. We'll, have a good we'll one. Put this up and uh, tweet it out and everything else. Awesome. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. I nearly lost my cool when he said Donald Trump is not racist and sexist. <laughs> Bitch, please. Donald Trump is not racist or sexist. Anyways, I must name check him now because he was he was very gentlemanly that's jacob wall j-a-c-o-b-w-o-h-l that's his twitter he is verified donald trump retweets jacob wall all the time he has a podcast himself and i enjoyed that he didn't ambush me i maybe ambushed him by re Recording this. Oh, wow. <laughs> I pulled the Jesse Waters on him.